Any other announcements before we get into the morning message? Uh, I may be embarrassed at that. Brian Park's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, Brian Park's oh, birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday, so Brian. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brian. Happy birthday to you. May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless Brian. May the dear Lord bless you. Amen. Very good. Uh, I had good news. I had a blessing. I got a good, clean report when I went to the doctor uh, about all those things they cut out of me. So I praise the good Lord for that. All right. And uh, we'll, we'll do some after the morning service. We'll take some words of of praise because we all should have a lot of words of praise. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, I guess I'm I'm ready to get. Good morning, doers of the word. We're Pastor. coming to you this wait, morning for no. the word Baptist Church. But not yet. Oh, <laughs> start all over. Oh, I Kevin, where are you at? He'll be right here, okay. Maybe you need a new Kevin chip, sir. I think I put the car Cinderella, in. Cinderella, Cinderella. <laughs> you got the lens cover uh, removed? Yeah, it's calling for a card. I think he forgot. Oh, yeah, it's brother card. Max. That's what, the, that's what the wicked stepsisters always say. Yeah, he's got to have an empty card. No card in it. Are you calling me a wicked <laughs> Yep. Sounds like it's good to go. Good morning. We're coming to you this morning from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road, Newberry, Ohio. And our zip code is 44065. If you'd like to write us, we'd love to hear from you. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That is the 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And you can hear this program being replayed on Sundays at 2 a.m., 8 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The title of the message this morning, and I'm Pastor Ernie Sanders, by the way. That's Ernie, not Bernie. <laughs> the title of the message is that it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled. And that we're going to start in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and verse 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But he's talking about in the beginning. It's a very, very difficult concept, one far beyond the ability of of us feeble uh, mortal or these feeble mortal men to try to comprehend. I remember one time I had uh, seen, I believe it was a play, and uh, where a person would, as they were stepping out of a room on, on the left side of the room, they were stepping back in, meaning that there was nothing beyond the four walls. The four walls, there was nothing out there. I tried to, to comprehend that uh, there could be anything beyond <laughs> space. God had created everything out there and in the beginning this goes this goes back to there never was a time when God didn't exist. God always existed eternally. 
And so all things that were created were created by the second person of the Trinity. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was the light of man. So what was there in the beginning? Well, we know in the beginning was God. And we know that there was light. We know that God had created the angels before he had created the earth and man. And so here, if we go over to Ezekiel chapter 28... And we start in verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was the covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold, and the workmanship of thy tabernacles, and the pipes were prepared to thee. In the day that thou was created, thou art the anointed cherub, and covereth, and have set thee so, that was upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways, from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee out as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering, cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Well, you see, here... He was in the garden of God was in heaven. And the garden of Eden was uh, a replica or it was after a type of the garden of Eden that existed first in heaven. And Satan was present as one of God's creation. And he was cast out of that down upon uh, the garden of Eden upon earth. And so we know that the angels were created there for before man was and before the earth was. And so when God created Adam, he placed him in the garden of Eden on earth and then he created Eve as a helpmate. Now, when we get to heaven, we're going to be back into the garden of Eden. Uh, we're going to have the twelve manner of trees. We're going to see all of these things that God had originally made and I'm kind of looking forward to that, folks. Yes, sir. We go to Genesis chapter 1, and we see here, now remember what we just read in, in John chapter 1. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word, the Logos, who is the Creator. And so as we go here now to Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 26, we uh, listen in to a conversation held between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, <clears throat> and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Well, that word replenish is one that's often confused today. In the Hebrew, it means to fill to the top, to fill to the top. The very first command that God gave man was to be fruitful and multiply, which is exactly the opposite of what the New World Order is telling people to do today. Now in this, you have God the Father giving the marching orders, God the Son carrying them out, and the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, always providing the power. And we see this from Genesis throughout the Bible. Uh, God is immutable. He never changes. He's the same today, tomorrow, forever. Amen. Well, uh, things were going well until the old devil shows up and tempts Adam and Eve. 
And as we take a look there, in chapter 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yet hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now remember, he uses the same three temptations over and over. What he used on, on Adam and Eve, which we started with Eve, uh, he has been using on mankind, and he used the very same, tried to use the very same thing on the Lord himself. And uh, those three temptations uh, were the lust of the flesh, the hunger for the food, the, the, uh, the fruit, the lust of the eyes, looking at the, how it was desirable, and of course, uh, the lust of, of pride, wanting to be like God. And I want to jump over to verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat and give it to her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, here, remember, this is uh, Christ the Creator. The Father always gave him the marching orders. He was the one that would confront his creation <coughs> with Satan. And here we see the war between uh, the church, the seed of Christ, and uh, or the seed of the woman, which is Christ in the church, and the seed of Satan, which are what we call liberals today, the Antichrist system out through the world. Mm -hmm. In verse uh, 15 of chapter 3, And I will put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise thy heel. Well, <coughs> I'm taking you a little walk through time, and now we go to Genesis chapter 22. And to get in the picture here now is the Lord Jesus Christ and Abraham, who was a type of Christ. <coughs> and it came to pass that after these, Genesis 22 verse 1, that after God, after that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, and he said, Behold, here I am. Now that word tempt is not the same as we use it today. What he's doing, he, meant, he moved him. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac and his son and cleave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went into the place of which God had told him. Now I want you, I know that all of you men, when you read this, you think, boy, what if that had been me? What would have I have done? Your son, your only son. But there's a lesson being taught here. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offerings, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but uh, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built there an, an altar there and laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Well, you see, God knew what he was going to do to begin with. Okay, It was Abraham that wasn't sure of his faith. But Abraham passed the test of his faith. But the message being said was this. 
here. God never asks us to do anything himself that he wouldn't do. Uh, and so here now, he's making a point. And the point is that he himself is going to provide a sacrifice for all of our sins, which he did. And that was the Lord Jesus. Now, I want you to go now over to uh, John chapter 3, which is a very familiar verse to you. Starting with verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And folks, that's what we're up against today. And it's going to get worse and worse. As, the, uh, as Scripture tells us, the world is going to hate us, and the persecution, uh, and as I told you, I think last week, abomination has hired a new czar, and his his job is to both persecute and prosecute Christians. That's what, what he's there for. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the great apostasy, so get ready for it. It's going to be in a very interesting summer. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord Jesus was in his humanity everything that God intended man to be. Adam was a big, big failure, okay? Mm -hmm. And why? Well, God gave Adam just like he gave all of us a free will. God didn't want, he didn't want a robot. He didn't make a robot, okay? He made a perfect man and he gave him a free will. Uh, but that Satan, the devil that he created, he didn't create a devil, he created a, uh, the most powerful, the most beautiful angel, the most beautiful creature that ever existed. Well, he was but he gave him a free will. <laughs> and with that free will, he developed pride and iniquity was found in him. And that he brought to Adam and Eve. And through them, it's come to all of us. And so, Jesus was perfect in every way in his humanity. He and he alone would be the only, the only one that could possibly be the perfect sacrifice for sins. The only one that could take away our sins. And so, God who is most merciful, again, provided a sacrifice for us. Unlike Allah, you know, Allah, He requires His people to, to kill themselves, to die for Him. But our God died for us, amen? amen. Now I want you to turn over to Isaiah chapter 53. And this is kind of like a little walk through history with our Lord Jesus we see his presence throughout the ages, throughout the aeons. In Isaiah 53, we're going to read, Who hath believed that report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor calmness that we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. In other words, he didn't appear as some beautiful splendor, uh, being that, that Adam would have been as God had made Adam a prototype. Mm -hmm. He's despised, he's rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now you know this is one passage of scripture uh, I've been told by a number of Orthodox Jewish people that they'll never read this, and that they will never read this past the scripture. And if you question them, well, what about that? That's in Isaiah 53. What about that? Doesn't that perfectly describe Messiah? They'll always answer you, no, he's not talking about the person of Jesus Christ, he's talking about the nation of Israel. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And we like sheep have all gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. The folks, you won't believe how I many prophecies have been fulfilled in this one passage of scripture today. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. And because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his men. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him, put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I provide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul into death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for our transgressions. Well, obviously, that could um, apply to no one but the Lord Jesus. And uh, that was written almost 800 years before the birth of Christ. Uh, the Jews were given this very, very, very clean, very clear, very precise picture of the suffering Messiah. And to this very day, until this very day, they as a nation are still rejecting the Messiah. And turn to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus finished all his sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the place of the high priest, which was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take him, Jesus, suddenly and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Now this is interesting because verse 7, verse 10, and verse 14, there were fragments uh, found of papyrus with these verses, with these three verses on it, and they dated back before 75 A.D. And the latest, the earliest date was like 66. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to, the, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. I'll bet old Judas was the one leading that conversation. Uh, you know, that uh, was in today's currency be somewhere around the area of about $500 uh, for that ointment that he poured. Now, what was going on here? First of all, Mary understood what she was doing. She had been sitting under the teachings of Jesus, and she would pour it over his head, meaning she was anointing him for the burial. She understood what she was doing. But when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you, the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but you have me not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there also shall this, that this woman hath done, be told.